Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me again and welcome to any new viewers. This is To The Point English with Ben. I'm Ben. And as you can see, I have a slightly different video for you today because a little bit later, we're going to be reading an article together because in recent videos, I've explained why I think it's important for you to read more in general, but specifically to read articles. And also, I also made a video recommending useful websites where you can find interesting articles to read. So today we're going to be reading an article to together. I'm going to tell you how to read an article, but specifically focusing on inference. So how to infer the meaning of words um, from, from the context. And I'll explain that in more detail a little bit later. So that's why I look like a call center worker today. And I'm in this little corner of my of my house this is actually where i recorded all the videos for my c1 advanced cambridge english exam preparation course you see what i did there maybe i'm getting be better at this marketing thing but but no i really think if you're preparing for the c1 advanced cambridge english exam uh, you'll find my course very useful i made it for you basically so check it out i'll put the link in the description also this is going to be the last video i make from this house because we're moving again i know it was only a year ago that we moved here but we're moving again to another house just just a few hundred meters away so the next video you'll have a, a different background so that will be exciting won't it <laughs> okay but let's get on with it, today's video so uh, as I said, in, in a moment, we're going to be reading an article, a BBC article, a section from the article, not the whole article. It's not necessary to read the whole article. Just to, It's just to give you an idea of how to infer a word meaning in, in a text. Um, but first of all, I want to explain what is inference, what is inferring meaning, um, and how to do that exactly before we actually go on to, to reading the article. So how to infer word, word meaning? Well, First of all, context. Context is everything. The general meaning of the text. So uh, when you're reading the text, you should, fr from the, the vocabulary and, and what you understand in the text, that will help you to infer particular word meaning. So when you're looking at specific words, the whole general meaning, the whole context will help you. You just have to use common sense often um, and just think, well, if if this is what the the text is is saying, is this the this is the idea that it's expressing? Then this word probably means this, or more or less. You, often, when we're inferring word meaning, we have to accept that we're not going to get the precise or the exact definition of the word, or the you know the real profound meaning of the word, the essence of the word. Often, it's just the general idea is enough. As I said later, if, if we remember the words or if we take notes of the words, we can look them up in the dec dictionary to get a specific meaning. But for the purposes of the exam, or just if you're reading a book and you don't want to be opening a dictionary every five seconds, um, getting a general meaning is often enough. Uh, also, what can help you to infer the word meaning is the vocabulary around the word. So you have to decide, is the word we're looking at is it positive or negative uh, and again the, the all the voc vocabulary around in the sentence surrounding the the word you're looking at or even that the whole paragraph can tell you if it if it's probably positive or negative and i've just realized i missed the i from the word positive there but you you get the idea positive uh, you, general clues a lot of different clues grammar and, and pronouns which we're going to look at in a moment um, but just pay attention to the clues in the sentence or the paragraph or even the whole text and think about collocations you know if if this word collocates with another word maybe the other word can help you infer the meaning of the word that you don't understand so using all the information at your disposal to help you infer the meaning grammar can also help so prepositions um, the preposition that often maybe goes before the word or after the word can, can help you, again, maybe not give you the, the exact dictionary definition, of course, but an idea of the general meaning. All of, the, all, of this, all of these clues can help. The part of speech, is it an adverb, an adjective, a verb, a noun, etc.? And you, can, you should be able to work out what part of speech the word is um, from the sentence, from the grammar of the sentence, from the syntax. And pronouns often help. What the pronoun that is being used, 
um, in the sentence, if there is a pronoun, can often help you get an idea of what type of word, what part of speech, if it's positive, negative, etc. That will help you um, infer the meaning. And also, it's good a good idea to think about the components of the word um, or the expression or the phrasal verb. Um, so often, longer words or phrasal verbs are uh, consist of different components, and maybe you recognize a part of the word, even if you don't know the whole word. So do you recognize any words within the word or within the phrasal verb? So for example, I've given a couple there, which are from previous videos of mine. So unflappable and dawn on. So unflappable, it's an, it's an adjective to be unflappable. And you have the root word there, which is flap, which is, which is a, a, a verb to flap, which means to move, um, quickly, little movements, little quick movements, like a bird flaps its wings in order to fly, or a flag can flap, or any kind of cloth or material can flap in the wind. Um, cloth, I should say, not material in general. So it's that, that movement. So if you know that, if you know the meaning of flap, then with able, it's able to flap, or it, it, it flaps, it is something that flaps. <laughs> um, it is able to flap, so, but something that is unflappable it is not able to flap so this is you often used to describe a person the characteristic of, of a person so uh, if a person is unflappable they they stay calm in a crisis or in a in a difficult situation so they don't flap they don't move quickly so again i wouldn't expect you to be able to to infer the precise meaning the exact def dictionary definition but you can get an idea from all the components of the word Similarly with dawn on, so you have a two-word phrasal verb, um, dawn and on. Um, so maybe you don't know the meaning of dawn on as a phrasal verb, but maybe you know the meaning of dawn. Dawn is the first moment in the morning when the sun is just rising, the sun is just coming up, it's starting to be light in the world. Um, and on is the preposition which you understand, of course. So Again, from the context in the sentence, that will help you, but just from the, the meaning of the individual words, if something dawns on you, um, then you have a moment of realization. You realize something. So say, it dawned on me that I had left my keys at home. So you're, you're thinking of something else and then some, suddenly something dawn on, dawns on you. So it's like this moment of illumination. Um, you're enlightened. So the sun is coming up um, and you, you realize something. So again, I wouldn't expect you to guess the precise meaning, but the general idea, it's its possible from all of the context, all of the clues, and thinking about the individual components of a word or a phrasal verb, or maybe an idiomatic expression too. Okay, so that's basically how we infer meaning, that's inference. Uh, but now let's look at a, an article so we can practice it as always the best way to really understand how to do anything is is to to do it to practice it so i'm going to we're going to look at a a bbc article now this is from a website that i recommended in my recent video um well it's the bbc website but the section the work life section um which as i said in my video it's not all about work because you have this um, how we live and how we think i am looking at a, a how we work article today because I think they're particularly useful for the exams. A lot of the articles, the, the, the texts that are used in the exams are about things are surrounding work, not necessarily work itself, but you know, everything is related, not everything, but a lot is, is connected to work. So, but also how we live and how we think are very useful sections of this, this part of the, the BBC website. So we're going to read a few paragraphs of this, this website. Um, so just the first four paragraphs, I think that should be enough for today. But of course, we always have to look at the title that in the exams, that's something I always recommend. And um, this is actually something I do in my workshops in my exam academy. We do okay, occasionally I give workshops where we read articles and I ask the students to read a paragraph and then to infer the meaning of any difficult vocabulary, any vocabulary they don't understand. So it's something you can do on your own, of course, just to, to read the whole article without a dictionary. And then you can later you can check, um, just to check that you've 
you've got the right meaning and, and to get the precise meaning is again as i said often you get just the general idea of the word when you're inferring the meaning um i i think it's a very useful exercise um, and as i said for those of you who are preparing for a cambridge exam or any any english exam it's particularly useful because you you will need to do this in the exam just one more thing i would say before we continue a lot of the words in difficult articles or, or difficult texts in general books they're not worth um, spending too much time thinking about sometimes they're very descriptive and you don't actually need to know the meaning for the purpose of understanding the text they're they're there to to be particularly dis descriptive but if your objective is only to understand the idea of a text, you don't need to understand all of the words. And again, in the exams, your time will be very limited. So you need to you need to know when just to sort of decide, I don't really need to spend time thinking about that word. I, I need to move on and just identify the answer and use inference for the words that I think are important to find the answer. Um, so yeah, if you're not preparing for an exam, it's useful to do this exercise anyway, because I think it 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 really develops your skill in trying to understand meaning. Because often you have a dictionary, but sometimes you don't have a dictionary, especially if you're you're having a conversation with sometime with someone. Sometimes we need to infer meaning if we're having a conversation with someone. Okay, so let's go and move on and have a look at this article. So we need to read the the title. So where the boss worker power struggle goes next. Okay, this is not a question. It's not where does the boss work power boss worker power struggle go next. No, it's a, it's a statement. This so it's saying this article is going to tell us where the boss power work boss worker power struggle goes next. And so we, is there any vocabulary there you don't understand? Well, you probably understand boss worker power struggle. Maybe some people find um, don't understand the meaning of struggle. Don't know. The meaning of, of struggle. Now we don't really have enough information here, we don't have enough context to be able to get, infer meaning yet. Maybe you can, I mean the boss worker, so it's hyphenated, so it's kind of suggesting there's some connection to the boss and worker, where the power goes next. Yeah, we don't have enough information, so we need to start reading the text. If That's if you don't understand the word struggle, if you do understand the word struggle, fantastic, but we're going to come back to the word struggle later. So let's look at this first little paragraph. Uh, the changing world of work has triggered, triggered a tug of war between employees and managers. Workers have had the upper hand, but some things may change if the economy sours. Okay, so there may be some difficult vocabulary there, right? Probably there are some words, a few words you don't understand. If not, fantastic, good for you. But let's just have a look at it. So the changing world of work has trigger, triggered a tug of war between employee, employees and managers. So we have maybe a couple of words here, triggered uh, and tug, a tug of war. And this is obviously a, a fixed expression, a tug of war, a tug of war. So we have a verb here because it's the past participle from the present perfect tense. So has triggered a tug of war between employees and, and managers. We're thinking about the changing world of work. Now, this is a very recent article, and we all know uh, about the changing world of work, I imagine, since COVID, since the pandemic. Uh, so that's part of the context. It's not just the text we see, it's the, the world we live in. That's the context too. We have to think about what we know, the information we know from the world we live in. So this changing world of work has triggered something of war so we know what war means right you'll know what war means a war between employees and managers um triggered so that's a tricky word maybe you don't need to understand that word maybe you just with a war between employees and managers the changing world of work war between but you can probably infer the meaning right triggered it, it's done something it's a it's a, it's a verb so it's doing something war between employees so you can probably guess the idea without knowing the specific meaning of the word. But you may also be familiar with the word trigger in a different context because the trigger, a trigger is a part of a gun, 
you may be familiar with that. So the gun, it's the little lever on a gun which fires the gun. When you pull the trigger, you activate the gun, you fire the gun. So you kind of start the gun. Um, so activate, start. So when we use trigger as a verb to trigger something, it is it means to activate or to start something. So uh, the changing world of work has started a war between employees and managers, a tug of war. What is a tug of war? It, it's not that important, really. War is enough. It has started a war. But I will explain. A tug of war, it's it's a game or it, it's like a sport. I think it used to be a sport in the Olympics even, but not anymore. So it's where you have a long rope and you have two teams of about 10 or 11 people pulling from each side. So you, each team is trying to, to, to pull further. So trying to pull the other team back. That's a tug of war, literally. Of course, this is more figurative. It's a tug of war where the people, are, the, the the employees and managers are sort of having this uh, sh <laughs> this little fight going back and forth. Or going so it's continuously moving. That's the idea of a tug of war. But as I said, if this came, this type of vocabulary comes up in an exam, you don't need to understand every word. You can infer the meaning of the sentence from the words you understand. Okay, let's move on to the next sentence. Workers have had the upper hand but some things may change if the economy sours sours so workers have had the upper hand again we we can't read this sentence without thinking about the previous sentence we have to take the previous sentence into consideration it's all the same context and even the title that we saw before um the power struggle between boss uh, boss and workers um so workers have had the upper hand what do we mean by upper hand? Well, one hand um, upper is, is, is higher, right? Upper hand. So is this positive or negative? If workers have had the upper hand, are they winning this, this tug of war, this, this power struggle? Who's winning? Well, you can probably think of upper is usually good, right? If you're upper, that's usually positive. So to have the, to have the upper hand probably means that the workers are winning, so to speak. But it does to have if you have the upper hand in a in an argument a, a fight a battle it means you're you have the advantage you are winning at that time uh, but some things may change if the economy sours but some things may change so workers are winning but some things may change if the economy sours so sours what do you think sours mean sours means Again, from the context, some things may change. Does that mean that the economy is going to get better? Some things may change if the economy gets better. Again, from the context of the world we're living in, probably not, right? But also from maybe you've 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 come across the word sour before, right? Sweet and sour. Um, it's it's a flavor, a flavor of food. Um, it's similar to bitter. Sour is is a is a bitter type of taste. Uh, like lemons are sour so it's not not usually used as a positive in this case it's a verb if something sours it can be used as an adjective a sour taste or a sour feeling it's negative uh, if something sours if we often speak about a relationship sour, souring to be um, to sour it 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 deteriorates it gets worse it becomes a little bit bitter um it becomes unpleasant so if the economy sours, it gets worse. It's negative, of course. And again, you don't need to know the precise meaning of sour to get enough of an idea to infer the meaning of the sentence. So I think now we have a good idea of this first paragraph, sort of introductory paragraph. Um, trigger means to start, tug of war. It's this game, but it, it does not important. It's a war between employees and managers. Work. The workers are winning, so the employees are winning. They have the upper hand, but some things may change if it get, if the economy gets worse, worse. So things may may get worse. Okay, so now they specifically mention the pandemic. So as the pandemic has changed the work, the way we work, one outcome has been an ongoing power struggle between workers and their employees, uh, employers. In many cases, employees have been seeking greater pay, support, and flexibility. And while some companies have moved to accommodate some or all of these demands, many others have dug in their heels. Okay, so it's very important to read the whole paragraph before you go back and, and think about the 
the specific vocabulary because you know the the information is important the whole context is important so as the as the pandemic has changed the way we work it's quite simple right everyone knows that the pandemic has changed the way we work if you've been paying attention over the last couple of years um one outcome has been an ongoing power struggle between workers and their employers so that is power struggle again as we saw in the title you remember from the title we saw where the boss worker power struggle goes next so it's power struggle so again with more context now perhaps we can get we can get closer to the the meaning of struggle uh, this ongoing power struggle because we we saw this war workers having the upper hand the workers winning the war this the one outcome has been an ongoing power struggle so it's it's related to a war or a battle a struggle is in this context basically is a fight again you can you should be able to now with all the information you have just from a few a couple of sentences that's enough to infer you know between workers and their employees a struggle is something between workers and their sorry employers the workers and their employers so a power struggle you i think you can infer that it's a battle it's like a battle a battle for power a fight for power between workers and employers so as i said sometimes you just need to stay calm when you're reading um reading a text and you there's a word you don't understand and you think ah oh, i need to understand that word i i'm not going to understand the text if i don't understand that word relax stay calm if you continue reading you will get more information more context and you can understand more um more of the words more of the words that perhaps in previous paragraphs you didn't understand they will start to make sense of course again in the exams if we're talking about the cambridge english exams you don't have much time you you won't have much time you have to be very conscious of of the time so you have to do this quite quickly and that's why it's important to practice you should be reading articles regularly and practice inference practicing how to infer the meaning let's continue anyway so in many cases employees have been seeking greater pay support and flexibility okay i think that sentence is quite clear right employee employees have been seeking have been looking for maybe that's a word that some people don't understand but again in the context have been something greater pay support and flexibility you know it's it's pretty obvious that they want greater pay pay support and flexibility it's not that they've been um ignoring or, or i don't know it, but what it, it has to be a positive word right or something that the employees want and while some company companies have moved to accommodate some or all of these demands many others have dug their heels in okay so we have a couple of words here or expressions accommodate maybe and dug their heels in let's look at accommodate first now that probably you probably realize that, that looks very similar to another word right accommodation which most people are familiar with so accommodation is a place where somebody stays right somebody sleeps usually um it could be your house your house is a type of accommodation but usually we're referring to hotels or bed and breakfasts hostels they are types of accommodation but of course we're using it here as accommodate and we're not talking about hotels or places to live we're talking about companies accommodating some or all of these demands so if you think accommodation is a place which welcomes people and um, accepts people to sleep to accommodate something you are accepting something accepting some or all of these demands so again using what you understand from of an of a word you can infer enough to to get an idea of the meaning so this is about accepting the demands while some companies have moved to accept some or all of these demands many others have dug their heels in sorry dug in their heels so now you understand accommodate and you should be able to understand the the whole sentence while some companies have moved to accommodate so some some companies have been positive they've been flexible at accepting these demands others so in contrast many others have dug their heels dug in their heels and this is an idiomatic expression to dig in your heels or to dig your heels in to dig in is a phrasal verb but in this idiomatic expression your heels so again looking at the components of the idiom here and the context of the sentence we can 
get enough of an idea, we can infer enough of the meaning to, to be able to understand the sentence or the, the paragraph. So many others have done something different, right? That's We know that. Whatever dug, dig, our, dig their heels in means, we know it's contrasting because while some companies have moved to accommodate, others haven't. They, they've, some, they've done something different. It's contrasting. So what is that? Is it the opposite? It could be the opposite. But to dig in their heels. So to dig, this dug is the past participle of dig. Dig in. So that's that's quite literal to dig in. But their heels, what are, what are heels? Well, you, you may know high heels um, from shoes or the part of the body. The heel is at the base of your foot at the at the uh, the back of your foot. Um, it's also the part of a shoe, as I said, the heel of a shoe, high heels. So to dig in your heels, you can imagine, hopefully, the meaning of that. It's to resist. If you dig in your heels, you're resisting something. Again, it, it could be from the idea of that game of tug of war that we saw before. If you, that's what it's literally what the the participants or competitors in a tug of war do. They literally dig in their heels because they're resisting the movement. I don't think I don't think the writer of this or Alex Christians Christian. I don't think he deliberately chose he or she. Alex could be a woman. Um, I don't think he or she deliberately chose that idiom because of because they used the example of tug of war before maybe they did i don't know but it's a coincidence but to dig in your heels is to resist but again you from the context uh, context some companies have accommodated been flexible they've been 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 uh, ready or prepared to move uh, to to move a little bit to to accommodate the demands others have done the opposite they've resisted they've dug their heels in so as you see, you can you what uh, uh, an expression, an idiom, which at first glance, when you first look at it, you think, I have no idea what that means. And if you just stay calm and think about the whole context and, and what you do understand, you can infer the meaning. OK, the next paragraph. This back and forth has been particularly apparent over the return to office. Sorry, over the return to office. Um, employers, for the most part, have been keen to nudge workers back to their desks or workplaces, whether on a full-time or hybrid schedule. Not all nudges have been successful, though, because many employees want to retain the flexible remote working patterns they've grown accustomed to through the wax and wane of COVID-19. OK, so again, perhaps some tricky vocabulary there. But again, focus on the vocabulary that you do understand first. You can get enough of an idea of what the paragraph means focusing on the vocabulary you do understand again i think people often panic and think oh there's lot there are lots of words i don't understand there i can't understand the the paragraph focus on what you do understand okay this back and forth has been particularly apparent over the return to office this back and forth this what is this referring to? It's referring to what was mentioned in the pre previous paragraph. And, and that's important, right? That's important because back and forth is referring, is, is referring to what has been mentioned here. So, and again, you can imagine back and forth. It's like backwards and forwards, right? So it's referring to movement. This uh, difference, the power struggle between workers and employees. Um, maybe they have different demands, different ideas. It's been going backwards and forwards. This tug of war again. The idea going move, movement, um, but the power struggle, the, this battle between the the two the two parties, the workers and employees. Sorry, workers and employers, bosses and employees. So I think yeah, you can get an idea of what that means. Uh, employers, employers for them for the most part have been keen to nudge workers back to their desks or workplaces, whether on a full time or hybrid schedule. Okay, I think you probably understand most of that. I mean, a hybrid schedule. This is quite a new concept, but again, hybrid. Most people know now hybrid cars. It's a mix. A hybrid car is a mixture between uh, petrol-driven cars and electric cars. So it's hybrid. It's two things maybe quite similar to a word in your own language too so it's maybe not too tricky uh, so perhaps the key, tricky word here is nudge and we've seen it twice it's it's in two sentences so we have a lot of context to help us here 
So em employers, for the most part, so in general, have been keen to nudge workers. They've been keen to do something to nudge uh, to to workers, to do something back to to return to their desks or work or workplaces. So, do you think that's to force workers back to their desks or workplaces? Maybe, maybe it's to force, it's to oblige them. Could be, but do you think that's logical and common from common sense? And in the next sentence, not all nudges. So here, here nudge is a verb. Here nudge is a verb to nudge, of course. Um, but here it's a noun, the plural of a noun, nudge, um, to nudge or a nudge or nudges. So not all nudges have been successful though, because many employees want to retain the flexible remote work working pattern. So obviously, obviously the, the workers are not, or the employers are not, yeah, the employers, not the workers. I keep confusing. Uh, the employers are not forcing the workers to go back because they haven't been successful. You know, if, an, if an, a boss wants somebody to do something, they can oblige them and it, it just happens. But they're keen to nudge. So again, probably not going to be able to infer the precise meaning of the word, but it's enough to know that it's not force. It's something less uh, emphatic than to force. And I will tell you now, but to nudge is to encourage, encourage, literally to nudge the origin of the word, the verb to nudge is to, to physically encourage someone to do something, usually with your elbow, say, go on, go on, do it, go and go and speak or go and sing, go and dance, whatever, do it. Nudging is encouraging. Um, so it's quite common in modern business to nudge rather than force people to do things. It's also common in politics. Rather than forcing people to do things, they encourage them. They use uh, practices and measures to to encourage people to do things rather than oblige them to do things. As I said, it can be a noun, a nudge or to nudge. But not all nudges have been successful, though, because many employees want to retain flexible work, re remote working patterns they've grown accustomed to through the wax and wane of COVID-19. So again, tr tricky vocabulary, wax and wane of COVID-19, again, you have to think, do you think that's important? Again, in an exam, when you time, your time is limited, you have to be selective on how much time you're going to spend thinking about vocabulary. It's probably not important, the wax of wane, wax and wane, but, um, and this is very difficult to infer, to be honest, the wax and wane. This is a very specific expression. So again, if you're not in a, in a class, you don't have a dictionary, you don't have your teacher, I would recommend you ignore it because you don't need to understand this expression for, to understand the, the, the idea of the sentence or the paragraph. The wax and wane, it's basically just the changing situations. When you have a changing situation, it waxes and wanes. It moves from one, uh, a lot of developments, it moves from one situation to another situation. It's not consistent. And so we have to adapt to the different um, situations, the wax and wane. And COVID-19 was obviously very typical of that. Okay, so moving on to this last paragraph we're going to look at today. Of course, if you want to finish this this article yourselves, you can check, find it on the work life um, section of the BBC uh, website. Uh, but we're just going to finish with this last paragraph. So far, this tug of war, now we know what tug of war means, has taken place amid a backdrop backdrop that has largely favoured workers, the great resignation, a prolonged hiring crisis and a rise in worker activis activism. But as ec economic conditions sour, that word again, sour, will the balance shift towards employers and lead to a return of pre-pandemic work practices? Okay, so they're using a question, a rhetorical question there, which, well, it's rhetorical that they're going to answer themselves in the rest of the article, but as I said, we're going to finish here, but okay. So, so far this tug of war, so this, this back and forth, this battle, this, this fight, this struggle between the uh, employee and employer has taken place amid a backdrop, backdrop that has largely fa favored workers has taken place. So it has happened. Hopefully you, you should know that at advanced level, you should know what has taken place mean. It's a, it means it, it's a, synonym of occurred or happened. Um, amid, do you know amid? Again, I think this is a good example because I think it's quite easy to infer the meaning of amid, but 
sometimes it's good to to look at the easy words just to see why because you've probably guessed that quite quickly you've inferred the meaning quite quickly but why well because the context but also because mid this this these three letters you can find in many words right middle for example in in middle um and middle means in the center right so a mid uh, a backdrop it's in the middle of a backdrop so yeah you probably inferred that very quickly if you didn't already know it um so it's quite a, a simple word to infer but other words are more difficult but you can go through the same process just you may need a little bit more time uh, a backdrop that has largely favored workers the great resignation so they describe that they're, they're telling you what this backdrop is so even if you don't understand what a backdrop backdrop is maybe you don't need to because the backdrop is the great resignation a great resi this is this phenomenon you may have heard of where many people are resigning from their their jobs their, their traditional jobs uh, to look for jobs that are maybe more fulfilling more rewarding um, that's ha that has happened since the, the pandemic so that is the backdrop again you, you that doesn't give you the precise definition of what backdrop is but it's enough it's enough to to understand the sentence and the paragraph uh, but backdrop again you may have seen backdrop in another context in videos the backdrop of a video of a any scene really it could be a, a play and physical or, or on in a, a video this is my backdrop it's everything that's behind me and sort of surrounding me so something that happens in in a more figurative sense sense a more literal a less literal sense it's the backdrop. It's what's happening sort of behind um, in life, in the world, the general um, movement, um, the backdrop to to this particular situation. So this particular situation is this tug of war, battle, struggle between the workers and uh, em uh, bosses or um, employers. And the, the great re re resignation is something bigger, which is happening as a backdrop. It's happening at the same time um, in the background, so to speak. So it's largely favored workers. So again, this is what we said before, that the workers have the upper hand. So they're, they're winning this little battle. Uh, the great resignation is, is part of you know, the power of the, of the worker, the employ, employer to employee <laughs> to resign. Uh, so a prolonged hiring crisis. The, so there are three three aspects to this backdrop: the Great Resignation, a prolonged hiring crisis. Prolonged again, maybe you don't know the meaning of prolonged, but from the composite of the word uh, long, you know, hopefully the adjective long and prolonged. So you can guess from the prefix it's longer to make longer or or something that continues for a long longer time so it can be a verb to prolong here it's an adjective a prolonged so an extended extended in time hiring crisis so crisis of hiring and a rise in worker activism so there are more more workers being um using activism to to fight for their rights but as economic conditions sour so again that word sour as they get worse as they become less beneficial um, become more bitter uh, will the balance uh, sorry will the balance shift towards employers and lead to a return of pre-pandemic working practices so the balance the balance between the employers and employees will it shift towards employers so shift again maybe you don't know but you can probably guess you can probably infer the meaning from the context and we've been talking about work workers have the upper hand they're winning this battle but maybe the balance will shift that will move to shift it's a short movement um a short punctual movement um in this case towards employers so it's the the this balance of this battle this tug of war maybe it's the question maybe it will shift towards employers and lead to a return of pre-pandemic working practices okay so I, that's that's basically how you should um infer meaning and use inference to 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 work out what the meaning of words that you don't understand that you've never seen before in an article or any text mean 
again, of course, if you're taking an exam, you'll need to practice that to be able to do it more quickly because you won't have that much time. But hopefully you found that useful. Um, as I said, check out the C1 Advanced Cambridge um, preparation course if you're planning on taking that soon. The C2 proficiency and B2 courses are, are coming as soon as possible. I'm working on them now. I know people have been asking about them. And I'm doing my best to get them out uh, very quickly. Okay, thank you for joining me and I'll see you very soon for another video.